Joining me now to discuss all of this, former assistant to President Trump, Kelly Sadler. All right, so we start the hearing, and, and Jerry Nadler gets a Democrat gets to make a statement, and he gets to ask a question in a way that says, hey, you know what, this report does not exonerate mm -hmm. uh, President Trump. The media took that, and that's been a, a sort of the chiron that I've seen flipping the channels around. But after that, it feels like this has been to President Trump's tweet has really has been remarkable. I don't know that uh, that this hearing has had laid a glove on the president. Well, it has not. And if anything, it's proved that there was no obstruction, there was no collusion, and the president was exonerated, even though he did not want to use that word. It's not a legal term. So so uh, Special Counsel Mueller could not use have used that word. But then there was a nice exchange with Radcliffe, with Representative Radcliffe, where he said, where is, I mean, our Department of Justice, why is President Trump the only one who's not cleared from, from anything when there wasn't enough evidence there's to a basically, there's of a innocence presumption of innocence, and, always. Right, right. And it was, it was out of, uh, again, and, uh, since Mueller brought up the word of the day purview, the, you know, he shouldn't have been deciding on whether or not uh, that was, shouldn't have been an opinion anyway. But I do want to play also f uh, for the audience, uh, Jim Jordan, because he had a, a pretty electric uh, exchange with Mueller, and I want your thoughts on it. Joseph Nipson's a guy who told Papadopoulos, the mysterious professor who lives in Rome and London, works at teach in two different universities. This is the guy who told Papadopoulos, he's the guy who starts it all. And when the FBI interviews him, he lies three times, and yet you don't charge him with a crime. And I'm curious as to why. Well, I can't get into it, and, uh, and it's obvious, I think, that we can't get into charging decisions. So, Kelly, here's what I'm wondering. It's after today, if the narrative changes, how the Republicans will play this. Will they say, okay, the AG, IG report is coming. Uh, we had clear examples of, of discrimination with respect to who charges were leveled against and who were, was mm -hmm. essentially allowed to get away. The source of all of this, the faulty, yeah. the still dossier and all of it, this person was never charged with a crime. Well, and the fact that uh, Mueller went into this testimony today and he said, I'm not going to talk about the Steele dossier. I'm not going to talk about the origins of this investigation. Well, the origins of this investigation were based on Russian interference. It was based on GPS. The fact that he did not know what firm GPS was that Hillary Clinton and the DNC hired them to dig up dirt where they hired a bunch of Russians to basically dip, how, dig up dirt I on gotta the go, but how, how, how hard should Republicans push on this? Or should they just sort of walk away uh, and, and focus on the economy and all the other great we things that are going on? We need to investigate the investigators because this was a deep conspiracy. And it's a conspiracy that the mainstream media has refused to, has ignored. And so when this investor general complaint comes up, this is something that we need to look into because right. it affects future presidencies. It's not just about President Trump. This was a gross abuse, perhaps, that happened within the FBI and the DOJ. There is something to be said about our democracy and the republic yes. itself. Thank you very much, Kelly. Appreciate it. Well, it's.